Hey you folks, Quilly here, and welcome to uh, my standard pre Ludum Dare video where I talk about Ludum Dare, make sure that everyone knows what it is, and also, you know, sort of think about what I might be interested in doing this year and review some of my old games and that sort of thing. For those of you who don't know, Ludum Dare or Ludum Dare is a game jam. It's a game programming competition. Happens three times per year. This is the 30th Ludum Dare overall and my 17th time in a row participating. I always live stream the entire thing from start to finish. We have an awesome time, uh, so you can just head over to twitch.tv slash quillyteen basically anytime this weekend, um, and we will, we'll, I'll be streaming some programming, unless I'm asleep. When I sleep, that's the only time I don't, and sleep is a very important part of the game jam. Um, make sure you get enough rest. It's like worth working less and sleeping more. You'll be much more productive and functional. If you do go to the website, which is now ldjam.com, you can still go to the old one, ludumdare.com, but ldjam.com is actually the new official website. Uh, it'll have a countdown timer over here so you know exactly when the action starts. And basically, it's at 9 p.m. on Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Friday is when the theme gets announced and when people start working. Uh, usually, I start the stream half an hour, maybe an hour beforehand. We chit-chat. Uh, we talk about potential ideas, that sort of thing. Uh, and then at 9, we get started. Normally, I don't program right away. Normally, I allow myself up to an hour to like uh, consider different options for the game and come up with a little mini design document and plan. Um, so... Uh, yeah, sometimes we start right away and sometimes we don't. It's actually, usually we spend up to about an hour planning things and it turns out to be awesome uh, and has really, really worked out well for me. Uh, there's actually two competitions that go on at the same time uh, for the Ludum Dare Game Jam. There's the Compo, which is the one I do. It's 48 hours, it's solo, and you can't use any pre-existing assets. No art, no music that's pre-existing in any way whatsoever. Um... That's the one I do. There's also a jam variant, which is not solo. You can you can do it as a group. Uh, you have 72 hours instead of 48, so you get an extra day. Um, and you can even use pre-existing assets. The jam's quite a bit uh, more relaxed in terms of rules. Um, you do, of course, get much fancier games when you've got, you know, dedicated artists and uh, sound people and the ability to use pre-existing assets, for example, and have a whole extra day. Um, but I really like the compo. There's a really interesting challenge in making a game on your own in 48 hours. And the big thing with Ludum Dare, and the reason I want to encourage absolutely everyone to participate, um, if you can, if you can do any kind of programming whatsoever, you should participate in Ludum Dare because people who make, people who are creative always want to be creating things, but rarely finish things, and with Ludum Dare, it's all about finishing. I just got a haircut, so my hair is all kind of non-optimal here. I should wear a hat. Screw it. That sounds like work. Not finishing things is a big problem with a lot of uh, people who want to do game stuff. And the whole thing with Ludum Dare is you've got a strict time limit. You have to finish in 48 or 72 hours because um, you're done. That's, that's when it ends. It's like the thing, the thing with most creative outlets is you're rarely finished. You're just sort of done or, or you know, however you want to word that expression. It's, you're, not, you're not finished. You're just out of time. Um, and so you have to choose a place to stop. It might not be completely finished, but you have to choose a place to stop and sort of, you know, present a cohesive package. And it was great. So my very first time, like, doing Ludum Dare, um, way back here for Ludum Dare 22, and it did the game called Paper Town over here. It was my first time really working in Unity, um, and uh, but it felt so good to finally finish a game, something I'd been wanting to do for my entire life. Well, I'd finally finished a computer game because... Uh, you know, over the constraints and you sort of choose an appropriate scope for your project and you go and with every project that I've done I've learned a little bit more done a little bit more um, and I've been happy and very proud of almost every single game I've made uh, 99 Luftwaffles is the one I'm most disappointed about but it did t teach me a lot of valuable lef lessons in particular there was a lot about time management that I learned from that because we spent a long time uh, trying to do 3D animated little buildings and things like that um, which didn't even end up looking that good in the end and ate so much time so I learned a lot about time management uh, doing that one although I sort of had to relearn it a little bit with ink as well uh, because again there was a lot of 3D visuals that ate a lot of time but other than that I've been happy with every single one of my um, of my projects considerably. Um, every one of these has been live streamed from start to finish, except Time Hack because I was actually traveling. I was out of the country during that Ludum Dare, Ludum Dare 27, but I still found the time on the plane crossing the Atlantic. I slapped together Time Hack in about six or seven hours, however long the plane uh, ride took, um, just so that I wouldn't break my streak. At the time, that was number six, and now you know I'm 17. Well, I'm six. I'm 16 games in. 
So I'm about to do number 17 here. Uh, the last one is Kitchen Wizard. Now, Kitchen Wizard and Shoot both demonstrate one of my interesting sort of, I don't know, how I like to schedule my weekend in that. Um, so again, at 9, the theme gets announced. I allow myself up to an hour to think about what game I want to make. Um, and then uh, I get to work. But I always say at the end of Friday night, if I'm not happy with what I've got, I'm allowed to throw it all out and start over. And I've done that twice now. I've done that for Shoot where originally it was going to be, I was going to make a puzzle game of some kind, and I just couldn't find the fun. So I threw it all out and then started working on Shoot Saturday morning. Um, and Kitchen Wizard Pinball was originally going to be a car racing kind of game, but um, I couldn't get the physics to work quite right. So I threw it all out, and I instead made a pinball game, and I was very happy with it. So the game that has come out, that have been rated the highest in terms of graphics from all my games so far. If I had the extra few hours that I had wasted on the car game, uh, then I would have uh, worked mostly on a, on a nicer background, would be really the thing uh, I would have put in. And maybe a ball saver, which would have been really nice. Um, but overall, it's that. So I always say, like, do participate. It's such a good feeling. And even if you're not very skilled, if all you can make is Pong, make Pong. That's okay. Like, literally, just find the simplest possible thing you can do. Your goal, you're going to learn so much just from completing game and understanding workflow and speed and scheduling. It's going to make such a difference. And looking at the themes um, for this year, which are some of these I should like highlight, um, There's you could easily think of ways to make Pong or a very similar to Pong kind of game with some of these themes, right? Dark light. So, okay, the paddle's a different color. Maybe there's like obstacles in the field that are different colors. And maybe when you hit the ball, the colors change like the invert, but you can only pass through certain, you know, the, the light color or the dark color or some damn things like that. Like, hey, there you go, it's Pong. You control the game, not the player. I don't know, something about like the field or maybe something about the ball or you affect gravity or some weird things. It's still Pong. Um, parallel dimensions, are there like two Pong fields happening at the same time in some sort of weird way? You know, uh, it works. Pausing has consequences. Yeah, I know, you pause the game and something happens. I'm sure you can think of something. Uh, keep it alive, so now you're, maybe you're playing both paddles and you're just trying to keep the ball in play for as long as possible. You know, there's like all these kinds of ways to, to consider this, like very, 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 very simple kind of mechanic. Um, also, uh, platformers. A lot of people make platformers, and oftentimes some of the games that win are platformers because you can make really good and be really creative at platformers. But the other advantage uh, is that platformers... The advantage of platformer is the gameplay mechanic is understood. You've got a character, he's got to be able to move left and right and jump, I guess, and jump on stuff. And so then, and then you get to like add more creativity, like, oh, okay, so there's light and dark areas and sometimes you have to hide in the dark areas because monsters can only get you in the light or vice versa or something like, it's like, it's easy to sort of build up on that. And doing a platform was kind of like the next level up from Pong, right? Like I always tell people, if you're starting game design, don't try to create your dream game first. Instead, clone some existing games because... The game itself, the existing game, will provide to you the your full design document um, because you'll know how everything is supposed to work, and then you're just going to focus on making it work. So you start by cloning Pong, then you clone Pac-Man, then you clone Mario Brothers, you know that sort of thing, um, and it teaches you a lot without having you having to like invent systems and figure out what you want things to do instead of just how to make things. So it's the same sort of thing. But yeah, I forgot Pac-Man's another um, example of something you can clone. There's actually. Hmm. Control the game, not the player. It'd be interesting things with you controlling the maze. You're controlling the maze and trying to, like, keep Pac-Man alive from the ghost by, like, blocking things off strategically. You can block things off to force Pac-Man to go in different directions, but also to prevent ghosts from going in that direction. You know, interesting kind of little ideas, right? You just bring it up to the next level, and you can still clone quite a bit of things. I don't know. Anyway, so, um, there are... We are in the final round of voting, so the top... Is it top 20? I think it used to be top 25. But I think it's top 20 themes that have been voted on. Uh, we now know what they are. So I'm just starting to jot down a few ideas um, about what I might like to do. Um, I would not mind doing another card game of some kind uh, because... What do I want? This one here. Um, I still really enjoyed working on Dr. Deckenstein, and I would love to take another crack at card game. Something with a completely different mechanic. Uh, although I still kind of like the deck building system, um, so maybe that kind of thing would stick on. Uh, but I kind of I've always liked um, how 
Uh, Fate of the World is sort of a card game kind of system. You don't really have a deck, but you're still playing from a predefined set of cards, and that's cool. Um, I've really been playing a lot of Star Realms lately, an excellent CCG, or, or not a CCG, deck building card game. Um, I like Dominion. I liked a few things like that. Like, it would be fun to take another crack at that, and a few themes might work well for it. Um, I'm always a fan of making another pinball game, although I don't really want to make two back-to-back, -back, uh, probably. No. No, no, we can't do that, right? <clears throat> that is my second pinball game, because I did one a long time ago with Pinballogy. That was still, this is my second Unity game ever, and it was still a lot of learning, but it was very handy. It was one of the ways to learn some amount of physics, uh, and Kittenzilla 3, the, Re the Revenge of Mecha Kittenzilla, was another way to learn a lot of uh, Unity physics in here. Um, so I probably wouldn't do that. Another strategy game, a hex game, a 4X game, that would be interesting. Uh, there's massive problems with trying to create a good and compelling 4X game in 48 hours, but it might be feasible to do something, assuming uh, can sort of figure out a core mechanic that works out very well. Um, so that would be good. Uh, always, you know, always like doing things that are like fast paced and kind of arcadey from time to time. I still think V for Vectory is an extremely fun game. I would have, in hindsight, removed quite a few features that I spent a lot of time trying to balance and then turned out to be very exciting. Um, the theme for this one was uh, One Room, I think it was. Or an entire game on one screen is what it was. Um, and it was the idea was like to sort of blend a sort of a shmup with um, a, a MOBA game. Um, and in the end, the MOBA game, well, I mean, it was sort of the idea of multiple lanes and things like that. Then it turned into sort of a base tower defense kind of thing rather than MOBA aspect, but also still having the shmup. Um, but we like we spent a lot of time trying to balance these various abilities that didn't turn into be very fun other than turrets. Um, and so I would love to take, you know, that could be done a lot more fun. I mean, I wouldn't do an exact same clone, but the idea of like another arcade game with lots of like particle effects and explosions and fun cool stuff, because most of my games, I do a fair amount of, like, sort of strategy kind of buildery games, because obviously that's what I like. Hell Wars 13, or sorry, Hell Wars 18 actually has a ton of particles and crazy stuff all over the place, even though it is um, sort of a, like, sort of a strategy game, sort of a tower defense -y kind of game uh, with a twist. Still, I still enjoy this a lot. It's got some of the best sound effects in my games. Um, Hell Wars 18 and uh, Shoot, actually some of the ones with the sound design I like the best. Uh, but, I don't know, Kitchen Wizard's alright. Could have used more sounds, I think, is ultimately what it was. But, so yeah, so I don't know exactly what kind of thing I might do. It'll depend very much on what theme gets picked. And so right now, what I'm doing is just like, and I do this every year. You, you write down the list of themes, and you just like, okay, first thing that comes to mind, go, go, go. Also, I go through um, my existing, my previous idea files, and see if there's any themes that are, sometimes it's the same, like literally this one's come up a lot. This one comes up like every time the final vote and has never won. Two colors comes up a lot, on off comes up a lot. Um, little things like that, so it's like, oh, maybe I can copy a few things. Um, I write down a few like games that like sort of give me that vibe, like, oh, Island. Well, Civ has, like, continents and islands, and, you know, it's a strategy game. Maybe there's something there. You know, there's the story of Robinson Crusoe. Is that how you spell his name? I think that's how you spell his name. Little things like that. Like, so that's not a game. That's not a mechanic, but it's, like, a possible sort of theme or inspiration or something of, of that nature. Um, I like my notes for here. One tool, many uses. So, like, a sonic screwdriver type thing. But how could you possibly make that fun or interesting? And not just some sort of silly Deus Ex device all the time. I don't know board game like Monopoly, except not sucky. There we go. Those are excellent notes over there. Uh, Small World got a few more things, because a lot of this was copy-pasted from the last time Small World came up as a possibility. And there was something like Tiny World that came up that was actually a pick theme some time ago. That was the time I made Fish Tank Commander. I'm like, Fish Tank Commander 2? Could be. It'd be fun to do a sequel to one of my own games. So, yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen. This list over the next, um, well, I guess over the next 48 hours. I'm recording this on, or I guess no, next 24 hours. I'm recording this Thursday afternoon. So I have a day and a bit to maybe add more ideas. So likely this is going to fill up a whole bunch. If you do have um, ideas, make sure to leave them in the comments or, you know, tweet them at me or anything like that. Always good to sort of swap these. The thing is, you can have 30 people do exactly the same sort of core idea. A lemmings-ish thing. And they're all going to be completely different. Uh, and people always ask, what is the it, what is the prize for winning Let Him Dare? Nothing. Literally no prize whatsoever. You do it for the love of programming is, is really what it comes down to. Um, many very successful Let Him Dare games in the past have then gone on and become polished and released as actual commercial games. Um, 
but it's not necessarily just the winners. In fact, a lot of times the winners win because they're really interesting and creative, but they're not necessarily going to be the most like commercially viable game. And so there's no, you know, there's no connection one to another. I mean, you still you keep personal ownership over your game even though you participate in here, so you can do whatever you want with it. You could come in dead last and still turn your game into a commercial thing later on if you wanted to. Um but yeah, but uh, but there's no actual reward to winning Ludum Dare. It's just it's just awesome. It's just the best way to do it. It's kind of like how um, the greatest uh, show on television is um, is the Great British Bake Off, and the prize for winning is like a cake platter, like a tray, and that's it. You know, there's no there's no money. It's just it's just great, and I think that's what makes it so so wonderful. So I'm really looking forward to it. So again, we're gonna start at 9 p.m. on Friday, uh, April the 21st. And we're gonna go. We're gonna stream all weekend. So no matter what time zone you're in, there's gonna be some amount of time during your day when I am streaming. Uh, it's always good for the Australians because they never they never get to catch my streams because it's at a very inconvenient time. Uh, but they will be able to catch me either early in my morning or late in my evening. Uh, so they'll be able to see me there. So that's cool. So yeah, come on out and please participate. If you're watching this, especially if you're watching this one on my programming channel, um, you've learned enough to be able to participate in Let Them Dare. Even if you know people say, "Oh well, I've got you know I've got to work or I've got to do this," it's like, okay, fine. So you don't have 48 hours. I mean, I don't have 48 hours either. I sleep. I try to get two proper eight-hour nights of sleep, so that's 16 hours less. So now we're down to 32. Plus, there's meals, and I try to get up and take a walk around the block every every couple hours. So you know, probably in the end, I have probably somewhere around 24 hours of actual working time well if you work on the weekend maybe you can come home and work to the two evenings you know the friday evening saturday evening or however it works out for your particular time zone and put in 12 hours that's that's going to be half as much time as me but it's like but it's not as bad as it sounds because you're like well i don't get 48 hours i'd only be able to work for 12 hours well it turns out 12 hours is actually in, in practice, not that far from what other people spend on their games. And the time when you're at work or you're doing, you know, whatever, that there's a good chance that you might still be able to think about your game and what you want to do. Uh, and remember, like, I did that one game uh, over here, Time Hack, on a plane over the Atlantic in six hours. It was not, it's not a great game. This, the point is not always to make a great game. This, I mean, and this was in a laptop, so, like, trying to make graphic stuff on here was just miserable. Oh, but I did it, man. I did it, and I was so freaking happy about it. Um, I was so freaking happy and satisfied in the end that, um, yeah, that's all. You just need to do something. Hell, if you only get four hours, you can make something. Again, you can make Pong. Pong with a twist. And then you just do it. And then you next next time Ludden Dare comes up, then maybe you have more time, or you do this, or you do that. You'll, you'll figure something out. It is really worth, worth doing it. It is really, I don't know, it's kind of awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.